Our first reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, beginning at verse 37 down to verse 40, and then finally verse 44. So John chapter 6, verse 37. And Jesus was speaking here. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And verse 44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And now if you will turn in your Bibles to the first letter of John, chapter 5 and verses 9 to 13. 1 John, chapter 5, verses 9 to 13. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater and this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. This second address in the series is salvation the certainty and the promise. And despite us having God's word freely available, it is not uncommon to hear of people having doubts about matters of faith. John the Baptist, after all that is recorded, in Matthew chapter 3, verses 11 to 17, seems to be having questions. And he sends his disciples to check that what he had been saying was true that Jesus was the coming Messiah.
the two disciples went to Jesus and asked him quite bluntly, are you the coming one or do we look for another? We see in Jesus' reply in Matthew chapter 11, verses 4 to 6. And Jesus then explained the situation to the crowd that John the Baptist was indeed the Elijah of Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, and Matthew 11, 7 to 14. It was not that God was taken by surprise concerning people's doubts and questions, because God knows all things. But he prompted John in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, which we read, to state that you may know that you have eternal life. It is not expressed in any way with any kind of uncertainty. It's quite definite. You can depend on it. It is fact. It is, as it were, a foundational statement for all true believers. And we should always keep our eye on Jesus. His salvation is certain. Now at this point, I have to say that some Christians believe quite sincerely that we can lose our salvation. But I must say, I do not agree and 1 John chapter 5 verse 13 is one of the foundational verses upon which I rely and another is in Romans 11 and verse 29 now in Romans 11 the passage concerning this verse is particularly talking about the situation with the Jews. But the comment which is made is not just addressed to the Jews, because it is one of the many things which is a mighty truth running throughout God's word. And it says this, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance, as it says in the authorised. The meaning is, when God gives gifts, and salvation is a gift, he will not take it away. We may backslide. But that is a different matter. In the translation that I have here, it says, the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. They're there. And also in John chapter 6, verses 37 to 40, It should leave us in no doubt that if we are saved, born again, it is a finished work of grace. We are fully saved. Romans chapter 6 and verse 14 says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. 
and Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, 9 and 10 make it quite clear that our salvation is by grace through faith. That is fully trusting God. And it's not of works. We have nothing to boast about in ourselves. It is all God's work. In addition, in Romans chapter 5, it says this in verse 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And in verses 6 to 11, it says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man some would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Friends, we have been reconciled, we have been redeemed, we have been forgiven, we are born again, we are on our way to our home in glory. And it is guaranteed by God. These verses should put our hearts at rest. That if we are truly born again, we are in Christ Jesus forever. We can also ask the straightforward question, based not only on John 6, verse 40, but also what Jesus said in John 3, 16, probably the best-known verse in the New Testament. And the question is simply this. If eternal or everlasting do not mean what they say, then what do they mean? I suggest we can put our full confidence in the fact that God's word is reliable and trustworthy. God is wholly reliable and trustworthy. And it is that our salvation is a certainty. The other matter I wish to address is the promise and a future home in heaven with Jesus. Jesus is God the Son. He was with the Father in heaven before he came to this world. When he was born in a human body, a miraculous event by the working of the Holy Spirit. And it is important to recognise a great truth here because some people try and, as it were, alter the meaning because they find it difficult to accept. But Jesus is not only God the Son, 
He has always been God the Son. When he came to this world, he didn't cease to be God because he was in a human body. He was who he said he was. He talked of his Father in heaven. And the verses which we have already looked at today make it quite clear that there is a very close relationship between the Father and the Son. He took upon himself our flesh. He who is the second person of the Trinity. That he never ceased to be God when he was on earth. God the Son. And he laid down his life as the Lamb of God. He and the Father, co-equal and co-eternal, together with the Holy Spirit. He knew all things. He knew who would betray him. And what is more, he knew that before the creation ever occurred. We have an example in scripture. So it is not just that Judas was saved, but then lost his salvation. The fact that Jesus referred to Judas in his prayer for his disciples as the son of perdition. How can we be sure? Just look at the words which Jesus used before that expression. And we'll just look at that in John chapter 17. And verses 6 to 12. Jesus speaking. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given to me, and they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you and have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all mine are yours. And yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And listen to this. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. So, as they say, that makes it quite clear. Jesus did not lose his salvation. He was never saved. If we compare this with what Jesus said to his disciples in John 6, verse 37, it says, All will come to me, 
and the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. <clears throat> the scriptures are clear, and we see it expanded in John 10, 27 to 30. And Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. These are some of the most important statements in the whole of Scripture. It is clear from what we have read, and in John chapter 6, 37 to 40, that if we are in Christ, we are safe and secure forever. Do not let the enemy upset your confidence. Your confidence should be grounded in Christ Jesus. We are held in the hand of the Almighty God, and he will never let us go. We are safe, hallelujah. From the moment we were born again, we were heading home. A home in heaven prepared for us by Jesus, as we see in John chapter 14 and verses 1 to 6. And it starts off by saying, let not your heart be troubled. And he explains about preparing a place for us. So we have Jesus' own words regarding the certainty of our salvation. In John 6, verses 35 to 40, and the future promise of our future in heaven with him. In John chapter 10, verses 27 to 30, and John 14, verses 1 to 6. There's no greater authority than the word of God. And that's where all this has come from. There is a very great verse, book of Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, chapter 3, verse 6. And it says, I am the Lord, I change not. I like the authorised rendering beyond all the others. Some say, I do not change. But when you have it emphatically, I am the Lord, I change not. To me, it rams it home. That is the God we serve. That is the God who is our Heavenly Father in heaven. He is the un eternal, unchanging God. And we can have complete confidence and assurance in him. We are safe in his hand, heading to our eternal home. Amen.